Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So, little disclaimer before I start, I know I look like a hot mess, um, yeah, my hay fever is really bad at the moment, I almost didn't film today, but I was like, you know what, do it for the followers, because I literally had the case researched, and it's probably going to be up a lot later than what my normal videos are, so I do apologise in advance if you're watching this at like 11pm at night. So today's case is a case of Victoria Columbia, I think that's how you say her last name, I said this in every single video. I just want to say, first off, this is a really, really heavy case. It features a storyline of abuse. So, if that's going to upset anyone in any way, please just click off the video right now. I don't want to, like, trigger anyone. Also, this case has a lot of names in. And when I was researching, my brain was kind of frazzled at connecting names from the start of the story to the end. So, I've left a lot of names out. So, like, if you look into this further and you're like, well, she's missed a lot of stuff out, I haven't, like... It will all make sense whenever I actually, like do it like I talk about people but not by name. Victoria was born 2nd of November 1991 in the Ivory Coast and she was born like in a place nearby the capital. Her parents were not wealthy at all, they lived in a poverty stricken area. They had seven children, Victoria was the fifth child and like they did not have the best of lives. Her parents, Francis and Bertha, they tried their best but like it's hard when they had so many kids and not like many ways of making money to make sure their kids had their best life. So it was a bit of a sad story from the very start. And they had lots of family and this included a woman called Marie Couillou. And Marie was kind of like a great aunt to Victoria and she came to visit after a relative died. I think her brother had died so she went to visit go to the funeral and she visited family including Victoria's family and she told them that she wanted to take one of their children back to France with her where she lived and she wanted to go and give this child a good education and obviously they'd never really met her that many times but they're not going to say no whenever they're like living in this much poverty and Victoria jumped at the chance she really wanted to be the child taken so they allowed her to go back to France. And just a bit of background on Marie, she was born in the Ivory Coast but obviously she moved to France and she was born 17th of July 1995. She was living in France with her three other children and she was like claiming benefits there so she wasn't really in the best of positions either but she didn't make the family aware of this at the time. And she was also divorced from her husband, she was single at the time but that kind of changed throughout the case which I'll get into that in a bit. It was October 1998 that she was in the Ivory Coast visiting and it was thought that her and Victoria left in October 1998 though it's not confirmed or anything and she took her back to France and Victoria could not use her like real name Victoria because originally Marie had planned on taking another child but in the end the family like backed out at the last minute and she had a passport made for this child and the name on there was Anne so Marie made Victoria go by the name of Anne during her stay. Sorry, I meant Anna, not Anne. <laughs> and not even a month after they first travelled, her school that like she sent Victoria to, they were already concerned and sending Marie messages saying, why is she taking so much time off school? Because she was actually never in school. School said she would like fall asleep in lessons. She just didn't seem alert and she didn't seem right. And Marie, she just told the school that Victoria was suffering from a skin condition, which isn't true. And this kind of was why she was absent all the time and it was to do with this. The last time the school saw her was the 25th of March 1999 and the school said that Victoria was wearing a wig. Which, I mean, she's seven. Why would a seven year old be wearing a wig, you know? And then pretty soon after that, they left the country and fled to Great Britain. She was very behind on her payments and was involved in a bit of a scandal where the government had paid her too much and she didn't want to pay them back. She literally owed over 2,000 euros and she could not afford this, so she fled to the UK. She'd also been evicted from her home, so it was on the 24th of April, they fled to the UK, but they had nowhere to stay, so for a while they were just staying in like a B&B, &B, you know? And this is where they stayed till the 1st of May when they managed to get their own place. But in this time, they went to visit some of their relatives. And one of these was a woman called Esther, and Esther had a daughter as well. And Esther and her daughter both said Victoria looked small and frail, she looked really ill. And that they noticed she was wearing a wig as well and they were quite confused by it. And the day after they went to visit Esther, Marie went to a homeless shelter to kind of to file for housing. She wanted housing, you know? And the person who was like helping them sort this out was called Julia Winter, but she couldn't really do much. Like, there's not nothing much that she could really do for them. On the 1st of May, they moved to a place called Nickel Road, which was 
in Brent in London. And this is kind of where they would stay for a little bit. So from when they arrived to the UK to July 1999, which is about three months, she literally went to multiple different organisations at least 18 times, like different social services, different housing people. And on the last 10 times, Victoria was with her and everyone who noticed her just said that she looked tiny, she looked ill she was wearing a wig and they were quite concerned someone even said she looked like a child from an action aid advert and literally looked just dirty but the person who saw this said they didn't do anything because they thought it was kind of all fake and it was just a way for the family to get like more money and more sympathy to kind of get what they wanted which you can't just presume that i there's so many people that could have helped in this situation and they didn't and it actually annoys me it will annoy you as well well victoria wasn't in school or anything but she did have a child minder who Marie met at her job in the hospital and this woman was called Priscilla and Priscilla noticed that Victoria had like cuts on her fingers and when she asked Marie about it Marie just said it was like from razors and that Victoria had done it herself on the 14th of June they met up with Esther again and Esther noticed Victoria had like a massive scar on her face and she asked why and Marie said that she'd fallen down an elevator and that's how she got it but Esther wasn't believing this and three days later when Esther went to visit the house, it just did not look like it was suitable for a child. So she went to social services and reported it and said that she was worried about Victoria. And this was the first of so many reports to social services. It drove me insane. I could have saved this girl. So the day that she went to social services and made that first phone call was the 18th of June. And it was faxed over to like the right people, but they just didn't check the fax. So, on the 21st of June, Esther rung up again because she hadn't heard anything, didn't know if anything was happening, to just make sure, like, it was being taken seriously. And the woman on the phone was like, yeah, yeah, like, social services, they'll be dealing with it right now, when they weren't. And even though this second phone call should have triggered another, like, look into it, it didn't. It wasn't until the 6th of July, which is, like, three weeks after it was made, that this referral was seen. And the guy who, like saw the facts was called robert smith and he like wrote all the details down but like this still i prevented help from being given to victoria it drives me insane the person kind of in charge of social services in the uk at the time said like after all this came out that it was just wholly unbelievable that like it was being treated this way which i agree with i agree and it was around this time marie met a guy called carl manning and she met him on a bus that he was driving because he was a bus driver not tight long for them to form a relationship and for her to move in with him and this had like nothing to do with the case but marie was carl's first girlfriend i just found that quite interesting but yeah on the 6th of july they moved into his flat and the abuse victoria was receiving was getting so much worse at this point carl played a massive part in the abuse as well on the 16th of july marie took victoria to priscilla cameron's house priscilla was the babysitter from earlier in the story and she basically said me and carl do not want victoria anymore we're going to leave her here and priscilla was like well you can't really leave her here forever but i'll have her overnight and this is what happened, she stayed the night. And her and her two children, Patrick and Avril, noticed that Victoria had so many injuries. On her right eye, literally, she had a piece of skin like loose and it was hanging over her eye. She had a burn on her face as well and they were quite worried. Marie really just told them and they asked, she was like, you know, they did it. she did it herself. She just abused herself. What did she do? Next day, they took her to Patrick's French teacher, which I don't know. And this French teacher was like, yeah, take this child to hospital. So this is what they did. They took her to hospital. And this was the first of her hospital visit. So they arrived at A&E at 11am. And by 11.50, they were being seen by the like senior house officer of A&E, who was at the time in this hospital, Dr. Reese Bent. And he took like all the info he had from the family. And he was like, yeah, this isn't accidental. This was done on purpose. So obviously hospitals have like guidelines they have to follow when they think a child is being abused. They have to like report it. So we reported it to the like Encore Pediatric Registrar, whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce. And he kind of thought that the other doctor would write up a full proper report. So he didn't do his report properly. He just kind of wrote up like a basic cursory report, which his mistake but well, the doctor did write one up for her injuries and victoria literally told this woman she'd done it all herself which doctors just did not believe her so they admitted her onto the ward and doctors told like police and everything 
and Victoria was like not allowed to leave this ward for at least 72 hours they put like a restraining thing on and obviously like they went and spoke to Marie Marie literally just said that Victoria had scabies and like all her injuries were caused by her like itch and her scabies every doctor there disagreed and was like no you're just covering yourself but one doctor did agree and this was Dr Ruby Swartz and she agreed that the injuries were caused by scratching and she made this diagnosis without even trying to speak to Victoria without Marie in the room Honestly, it just angers me. It really angers me. And one of her doctors in training when they were writing up the report accidentally wrote that there was no child protection like issue. And she like later on said, I feel devastated and saddened that we failed to protect her and I was not more proactive in doing things, which good for you. And a council officer, obviously the council knew about this. They were about to start an investigation, heard what Ruby had said and dropped it. I just, oh, I can't, I can't with this case. So many people could have helped this girl. It's like the Sylvia Likens one. So many people could have helped her. And it's not even just like people, it's like important people who actually have a say and like can get stuff done. And one of the people who was leading the inquiry, like after the events took place, so basically saying, you know, that people are kind of passing the book onto other people to do their job, which, yeah. And because no one spoke to Victoria alone, she didn't even know that she had police protection. She literally thought she was all alone. Marie and Carl were not even spoken to. I don't understand. And they did like assign someone to this case. But the person who was assigned to this case, she was like still kind of in training. She was still doing like seminars. And she thought the seminars were more important than the actual child protection. I, just, I don't know. And then on the 24th of July, 1999 again, Victoria had her second hospital admission. Like, I'm not fully sure what this was for, but Marie took her down to hospital. And at one point, the doctors said that Marie started shouting at Victoria in a hospital bed. And Victoria had jumped out of the hospital bed, stood to attention like, like an army person, and wet herself with fear. But yet, what did the doctors do? Jackal. They found no evidence of scabies, and they all said they saw signs of abuse. But no one did anything. The doctors literally dismissed her and said, like, it's fine. And the doctors basically said later on in the case that they meant she was physically fit to leave hospital but not to go home. But, like, they didn't make this clear at all if they did mean this. The doctors are all really sad now, you know, that we're involved. And we're like, I'm really sad that we didn't do more for her. Like, the doctor who, like, let her leave said that she just presumed that police and social services would know to get involved. Which, they're not going to know when you don't tell them anything, girl, you know? not my readers but she did actually get a social worker and police officer like involved in the case someone got them involved and these were lisa arthur worry which was a social worker and the police officer was karen jones and they went to do a home visit on the 4th of august so just like a few weeks after the hospital visit but they cancelled it because they read her report and were like victoria's got scabies we don't know much about scabies and they were scared of catching it so that's why they cancelled it ridiculous like they said they rung up the hospital to get more information on scabies and they didn't answer but the hospital have like no record of this at all so it probably didn't happen they told them that like all the injuries and scars were likely caused by belt buckles but no signs of abuse should have been detected what on the 5th of august another social worker got involved and took her to a completely different like nspcc center which like wasn't in the same borough as what she should have been going to and taking Victoria to, you know? Because, like, they have, like, different kind of areas for each centre. And this was not the centre that Victoria should have been going to, but I don't understand why she was brought here. They literally just said, like, oh, we brought her to this one because they've moved out of the borough, which they haven't. <laughs> and obviously social services were like, why is this girl covered in burns and marks? And Marie said, Victoria poured boiling hot water all over herself to help her with her scabies weird flex and they believed her and like let her go home the next day on the 7th of august marie obviously had a call with social services and they're like yeah case is closed have a nice life social services justified this they're like oh victoria seemed happy like she didn't tell us about any abuse like yeah because she was scared and these social like services and workers have literally since been called chaotic which i agree they were chaotic and, and at this point marie did not let victoria go to hospital for any of her injuries like she was getting abused on the daily like, she just go to churches and said Victoria had been like possessed and she claimed to be like Victoria's mother and just like wanted prayers so her daughter could get the demon out. And at one church the priest was actually convinced that Victoria was being abused 
but because he believed in that possession and Marie said that the devil himself had possessed Victoria, he didn't report it. I just I don't understand. And they were all under the impression that the possession had caused these injuries. And from October 1999 to January 2000, they would force her to sleep in a bin liner in the bathtub. And this bin liner was where Victoria had to go to the toilet. So this bin liner was filled with like excrement. Oh, I just, this poor girl did not deserve this. It actually makes me like want to cry. Marie just told social services, you know, all oh, this is because of bedwetting. And social services were like, oh yeah, that's fine. She also told them that Carl was sexually abusing and assaulting Victoria and then she dropped these charges and there's like no evidence that this was happening but just like there's so much dodginess going on like no one's doing anything and Carl actually said he didn't and I don't think there's any evidence saying that he did but like oh this poor girl and they said the only reason that she stayed in that house is because they only took children who were like high risk this girl is high risk she's been in hospital twice and then in the space of like a month from kind of the new decade is that like what it is December 1999 to January 2000 they tried to make three visits to the flat no one answered so they just sent Marie like a nice friendly letter saying if you don't speak to us soon then we're gonna have to drop this case so they just dropped the case you know they're like oh yeah she's moved back to France not a problem now they hadn't moved back to France they were avoiding you that was the 24th of Feb and Marie takes Victoria down to church because Victoria was not conscious Victoria had severe malnutrition and Victoria had hypothermia and she was like, yeah, she's been possessed again, fix her. And this priest was like, actually, no, this girl needs hospital. So he called them like a cab. The cab driver saw the state of Victoria and was like, I am driving you to a nearby like ambulance station, you know, where the ambulances are like kept. A place where like ambulances are when they're not like in hospital, like an ambulance station, I don't know. Like, my granddad lives near one. I don't know how to explain it. But yeah, he took Victoria straight there because he said her injuries just looked devastating. He never seen anything like it. He took her there and went to sped off to hospital and she was put in, like, intensive care straight away. He was first sent to A&E in North Middlesex Hospital. But then they were like, no, she needs to go somewhere with more high equipment. He was then transferred to the intensive unit care at St Mary's Hospital. And the ambulance people said Marie was, like, acting concerned. But, like, it was clearly acting. She kept saying over and over again, my baby when she just didn't seem because then it was kind of like emotionless it was like my baby my baby Carl literally just shouldn't have been there he just didn't care at all sadly the next day at 3 15 pm victoria died of her injuries she had 128 injuries like at least like these are like isolated injuries so like all separate she had at least like 128 on her body also like severely starved beaten she had like all these burns of cigarettes and hot water all over her body and marks from being hit with whips bike chains like wires just everything like belt buckles as well hammers she had like marks from hammers marks showing she'd been tied up for periods of like over 24 hours at a time oh just this poor girl and her body like after like the autopsy and everything was buried near her hometown thankfully so her parents her poor parents as well like it's normal in their culture to like send children away with family to do this but like how could they expect this they wouldn't have expected it obviously marie she was arrested that day but carl was arrested the next night and marie was just saying like it's unfair she'd lost her child and I, like she was going through a lot of stuff basically on the 20th of november 2000 they were both charged with child cruelty and murder. carl pled guilty to the child cruelty and manslaughter but Marie just claimed her innocence and said she didn't do anything. It was just scabies, what are you talking about? So Marie just always claimed her innocence and said she was like being framed in a conspiracy. Which, girl, listen, you made that important. You were trash. That Carl said you could beat her and she would not cry at all. I'd take beatings and pain like anything. Carl, you were trash. Also trash. Just like don't like you. They both just kept saying she was possessed and like they couldn't help it. But of course the next year on the 12th of Jan they were both found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. They're still in prison obviously because they couldn't be out of prison. So she went to Durham prison and he went to Wakefield prison. Now the main part of this case is the aftermath of it because this girl went to hospital, she had social services involved and no one prevented this abuse, no one like, took her away from home and there was a massive, massive inquiry into 
why this girl had been failed by the system because let's be real she had been failed so a few months after her death they said you know we need to look into this further and the person asked to investigate he was like the chief executive of social services in the uk and he decided to make it a public inquiry because he knew the public wanted to know why this girl had been failed so the public have access to everything and still do like you can literally go online and there's a website that the government and the social services have made with all the evidence and like documents on and this inquiry was actually like three separate inquiries and it's like the only it was the first of its kind to be like focused on three different organizations and it had like three bits of legislation which they were kind of looking at it had the section 81 of children act 1989 section 84 of national health service act 1977 section 49 of the police act 1996 and it was officially launched in april 2001 and it had two phases the first phase was about the people and the agencies and this took so long because I was like misplaced documents that had to be reopened and like there were over 270 people they had to like speak to that's how many people were involved in this 270 people could have stopped this girl from dying I'm not annoyed about it or anything but well yeah I am I'm annoyed so it started on the 26th of September 2001 and it finished on the 31st of July 2002 it's meant to finish in Feb 2002 but like there's so many things that caused delays in this and Carla Marie literally had to speak in these about why no one stopped their abuse. During this phase, like, there were so many things being brought up about, obviously, Victoria's skin colour. She came from, like, Africa, and people were saying that a lot of it could have been racism, and they didn't care as much because she wasn't white, which, if this is true, that is disgusting. No child should have to face this abuse. Like, no child at all. I just, I can't, I really can't. It's like, imagine looking at a child and thinking, you're being abused, but I'm not gonna do anything because your skin colour is darker than mine and obviously there was a lot of like neglect in agencies and competence like just didn't care and there were 12 massive occasions that multiple different agencies could have stepped in and saved this girl's life 12 i just i can't so lisa arthur worry which if you remember she was a social worker assigned to the case who like cancelled the visit because of scabies she said she felt like the blame was all being put on her and it wasn't her fault. She just wasn't given enough support, apparently. She blamed her colleagues and her boss for everything. She said she never read the files properly either, which, that's on you, girl. And she said she wasn't supervised properly, which, that's, like, not to do with this. You don't have to be supervised to do your job whenever you're trained for it, you know? That's only if, like, you're new to the job. The council of the place where the NSPCC centre was that Victoria was took to said him and his council could not have done anything more to help this girl, which you could. You could go. Esther also spoke to them and said she reported it twice and nothing was done. And Priscilla also spoke saying that she took this girl to the doctors and no one did anything. <sighs> and then phase two of the inquiry started after this did the 15th of March 2002 and it just lasted like over a month and it took the form of five different seminars which looked at like different child protection like and the system in general and like why the system failed her and it was like kind of brought together by all the experts in child protection which they should have been here before this girl died but whatever the key social workers in this case she was found guilty for like failing to attend this public inquiry the fine was only five hundred dollars five hundred dollars which i mean and her fine was five hundred pounds not really enough is it girl and a few months later a few more people were sacked and the first phase had to be reopened when it was closed because they found more documents that people have been hiding that was the first like triple inquiry on a child's death featuring the nhs police and social services and it was the most expensive like child protection investigation in the uk in her life victoria in the uk was known to four different social service like companies three housing departments two hospitals multiple churches two child protection teams and an NSPCC center and yet she still died literally when she was gone her parents only received three messages about her all saying she was fine and obviously her parents were devastated they attended all the inquiries and they actually like received a lot of scrutiny for like leaving their child with someone that they didn't know which this is done all the time in this culture i just want to say like i don't blame the parents at all she was a family member so they weren't gonna know it's literally like or sending one of my siblings off to live with like our aunt or great aunt you know and her father broke down seeing like her injuries and seeing the pictures of what happened to his daughter he was devastated so was her mother her death was responsible for a lot of changes in the way that we deal with these sorts of things now and the way that social services work and it started the formation of the every child matters program which basically makes sure that every child receives the same treatment and that they actually get help to kind of 
is dedicated to improving the lives of children and it's to all this case also started the introduction of the child act 2004 an act of parliament which basically proves the legislative base for many reforms the creation of contact point a database designed to hold information on all children in england and wales but that's no longer in operation now for some reason and the creation of the post of children's commissioner who like basically heads an office of like a company meant to look after children so yeah this case made a lot of changes in the uk but it's just it's so sad it just it angers me so many people were involved in her 270 people were involved 13 occasions she could have been saved and she wasn't and i just victoria i am so so sorry that our country failed you and honestly it really upsets me that she was going through all of this and people knew and didn't care and didn't do enough a life could have been saved she could have gone on to do amazing things in this world she went and left her home when she was six years old for a better life and this is what she got and this is how we repaid her by ignoring her cries for help ignoring her hospital visits i'm just the good things to come out of this is like this massive inquiry which i'm very glad this came out of it obviously i wish we could turn back time and stop her from dying at all and got her the help but this like all the new things passed by her death have helped saved a lot of lives victoria is a hero what she went through is saving other children from going through that oh i'm getting really emotional so i'm gonna end this video here if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up like comment subscribe and give me some more case suggestions down below bye guys